Hi everybody, I'm Jacqueline. I'm Noelle. And this is Zoe. And welcome to the second episode of Knits and Pieces. Today we're coming to you from Jacqueline's home in London, Ontario. I'm from Sarnia, Ontario, but I'm down. Actually, I've just finished up a work term in London, so this is my last day staying here, and then I'll be back to Sarnia. Hopefully you'll be back visiting. Yeah, Spend I'll more time with us instead I will of be back. working yeah. all the time. <laughs> and um, today is St. Patrick's Day, so we're all wearing a little bit of green because I am Irish, and of course then Zoe and Jacqueline are also Irish. Yeah, so happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. So say happy St. Patrick's Day, Zoe. <laughs> Today we're each wearing a hand knit hat and we'll get into later in the podcast a little bit why, but we'll just tell you which pattern we're wearing right now. So Jacqueline, what does Zoe have on? So Zoe has uh, the antler hat by Tin Can Knits, which we showed uh, slightly some, oh, it was, it was the same, right? Yes, I did the same one for my other granddaughter, Molly, but hers was just a little bit smaller and in different yarn. Um, and I'm wearing the Copycat CC Beanie. And yeah, the Copycat CC Beanie is actually a free pattern on Ravelry and it is by Emily Ingrid. Okay, and Jacqueline's is knit in Rowan Pure Wool Worsted in the, just it's um, an ivory colorway. Okay, and it only took about 0.65 of a skein to do that. So it's a pretty quick knit. And Zoe's is knit in uh, Loops and Threads Color Wheel and it just took 150 gram skein to do that. Okay, and my hat is the Bant Hat by Tin Can Knits, and it is knit in yarn that I got when we were out in Prince Edward Island. So the, the kind of the tealy blue in it is actually, um, I should take it off and show it here. So the bluish color is basically their 100% merino. They had a special island collection with just different colorways. And then the white or the cream is actually Samoyed yarn. So the yarn is a blend, it's 75% Samoyed and 25% Merino, and it is super soft. So in the ball, when you look at it in the ball, it doesn't have quite, it does have a halo, but not the amount that you get once you start knitting with it, but it's just, it's unbelievably soft. Like, you would feel it too, Zoe? <laughs> yeah, that's really soft yarn. Mm. And it's really warm, you were saying, It's right? really warm. Like, it's supposedly, I don't know, at least eight times warmer than wool. Because it's the way the fibers are, they're hollow, so they trap more air, so it provides more insulation. Mm -hmm. So while it's really good for items like hats and probably, it would probably be really good to put in mitts, like mm -hmm. this type of mitts, yeah. um, you probably wouldn't want a whole sweater out of it because it would probably be too Very warm. warm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so now we're moving on to FOs. So this first FO that I have, it's really one that I showed you last podcast, but I just wanted to show you that if you're giving a gift, like a pair of socks or anything really, you can put something on it that just makes it a little more personalized. Yeah. So I just make these little labels. They're just made with cardstock and then a stamp that I, that I got at Michael's that just says handmade with love. So I kind of put that band around them. And then on the back, I've just got a little stamp that says to and from and with love. So they're kind of just a nice way to personalize when you give something as a gift. Yeah. So, okay, and my next finished objects here. You Aww. can hold up those ones. <laughs> so and, look and at those. Zoe. <laughs> okay, so these are just a couple of little pairs of baby socks. Um, these were done with <laughs> leftover sock yarn from other socks. So it's a nice way to use up your leftover sock yarn. So this pair here, this is done in, the main color is lichen and lace, and it's in their colorway called Pressed Flowers. It's really pretty. It's got all sorts of other colors in it. Then the heels and the toes and this little ruffle, those were done with yarn that I actually dyed. Yourself, but it, yeah. So the yarn was just um, Lion Brand Sockies, which is a, a 75 25, mm -hmm. and all I used to dye it with was food coloring. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, Wilson food coloring. So the way you kind of get the variegated, like I just made the, the dye pot, and then I just kind yeah, of dipped, dipped it in, in a bit. So yeah. then you got the light color yeah. one in last. Yeah, so it's kind of cool, and you can make it to match whatever color you're looking for. And then how, so how do you, what do you do after you you dip dye it in the... the um, after I did that, then you let it sit in the dye pot until basically all of the color is absorbed. Yep. And then once it's cooled down, you have to wash it out um, with a little bit of soak or something just to get the, the residual mm -hmm. out. And yep. then you hang it to dry and then you can skein it. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So these ones also, these little socks were done with um, yarn that I hand dyed. Uh, the 
it is Wilton's again, but this one here, the darker, it's kind of a purpley gray. It was actually done with, I found a food coloring that was, it was black, but it's oh, not really? coming out black, but it was a powder. Oh, okay. So yeah, so I used it another time and just made little speckles with it, but yep. it was a powder. Um, and then this variegated one, I just laid the yarn out on a cookie sheet. Yeah. And then I put my different colors of food coloring, basically mixed with water, just into little squirt bottles that I oh, got, like at Michael's. Like yeah. Cool. So then I just went through and squirted all the colors all over till I think I thought I had enough in yeah. it. Now, when you do that and you're not dipping it into a dye pot, then you have to set the dye with heat. Mm -hmm. So I just got my um, canning jar and I put it on the stove and steamed it. Oh, cool. Like for so many minutes. And then you do the same thing. You rinse it out and then you hang it up to dry. Yeah, it so turned out really well. Yeah, yeah that's really good. I like it. So, and it was fun. And I'm not, I don't want to get into using acid dyes and things that you have to have separate pots for. So, yeah. so you want to come see Grandma till Mummy shows hers? Sure. Hey, so, mommy. for my FOs this week, um, the first one I'll show is one that I showed last time, but it wasn't a fully finished FO. So, this is Zoe's little Azelle pullover by the Velvet Acorn. And I finally, uh, sewed in all the ends and added her little turtle buttons to it. So that's hers. And then of course, to match, I finished mine, which we'll have to insert a picture because it's, a pretty, it's, pretty, it's pretty big. big. It's pretty big. Um, it turned out that mine's going to be more of a sweater dress than, yeah, a, than a pullover. Like, but it's like a long tunic. Yeah, yeah. But I really, really liked the way it turned out. And I did mine um, in the uh, LRA, uh, Cozy Alpaca. Cozy Alpaca Chunky. And yeah, I really like how it turned out. Like the drape of it is really, really nice. Mm -hmm. And we'll insert a picture of me wearing it so you can get a and better it idea. It. It's really soft. Yeah. So yeah, that's... Do you want to tell them about the neck? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> we, ca we cast on the cowl neck and not realizing it, I had done almost eight inches of the, of the neck and... I was, I was working on it and getting pretty close to being done and mom kind of looks at it and goes, that looks, did we, did, did, did you cast on? I cast on the opposite way. Well, you started the pattern on the on wrong the opposite, side. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I didn't even realize t either till I pulled well, out I hers to sew on the end, uh, her right. ends in and stuff that I'm like, oh, you they don't you quite match. But you could have kept it. You could have just turned it I down. I could have. You didn't want to. But... I just, I couldn't, I couldn't. <laughs> but to be fair, we were drinking wine that That's night. true. Should have learned, <laughs> should have learned by now that that's not the way. That that's not the way to. And it was probably, a sad, it's a very sad thing to watch you rip, rip, rip it out. I, I ripped it you out. You ripped it out. I just couldn't, do it. I just she couldn't do it. So. Um, but, but yeah, I, I but, really like the way realistically, it realistically, when it was off the needles, when I ripped it out, then you went and tried it on. Yeah, so I got a better idea of how much I wanted to knit and yeah. for it to uh, fold over for the, the cow neck. So, yeah, yeah I really cool. liked the way it turned out. And we'll see. Maybe Grandma needs to knit herself uh, in his elbow over. Hey, come back to Mom. Grandma can go on to her next FO. Okay, so my next FO here is just some dishcloths. F-O-Z. F-O-Z. <laughs> so there's just three different dishcloths here. Um, the one yarn. That one's my favorite. This one, yeah, <laughs> I like this one. And then this blue. But the blue and the turquoise, they are Premier Yarns Home. And they are actually an 85% cotton, 15% acrylic. So I've never used it before, but it was just at Mary Maxim's. And I didn't have my whole stash from home, so I didn't have any cotton yarn with me. So I thought, well, I'll just try this. And I do really like the look of how it turned out. Yeah. So we'll see how they, how they work using them. And that was, what pattern was that? Um, this pattern is just, I think it's the grandma's favorite, but I'm not positive. I just did like, you know, the, the increases were just knit front and back, and then the decreases were knit two together and it was two stitches on each edge because some of them are a little bit different on the number of edge stitches. So, and then this one here is the Bernat um, Handicrafter Cotton and that colorway is called um, Potpourri Ombre. So it's kind of pretty. It's just got little, yeah, little I pink like it. and green I think flecks. I might have to get some yeah. <laughs> so, so we'll see how they work up, but they're, they feel nice. Yeah, and okay. when we when I do dishcloths, I usually do them. These ones were all done on a 3.75 millimeter needle. I know a lot of the patterns recommend a, um, a five, but I really like 
the texture and the knit to be really tight on them because when you put them in the water, they kind of stretch out and spread out a bit. Do you want to hold that one, Zoe? Mm -hmm. There. Yeah, that one's your favorite too. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I like them on the, the smaller needle and that way they're just a little more structure to them. Okay? Yep. And then my last FO is actually two <laughs> pairs. Actually, not, two yeah, pairs of socks. Multiple FOs. So, okay, I'll hold up the two different pairs. I can hold up one. Okay, you hold up one. Okay, so what happened is these were a half finished object last time we podcast. Mm -hmm and I had finished this sock. Well then, I knit another one just like this, which is one of these two. Yep. I'm not sure which one, <laughs> but it was one of these two. But what happened was, when I got to casting off the toe, I'm like, why does, it, why does this toe seem like it's going on forever? Well, this sock was knit with 60 stitches, and that sock was knit with 64 stitches. So I thought, okay, what am I gonna do? I don't wanna rip out, I had the whole sock done. I thought I don't wanna rip out a whole sock, so what am I gonna do? So I decided that, I would finish my one sock that matches this. So that's these two. Okay, so I finished those so I would have a pair, if you can see those, okay. And then I thought, well, with the sock that I'd already knit, I knew I didn't have enough to do like a whole sock the same length. So what I did was um, I put my needle in and I cut off the cuff and a few rows. And so put that back on the needle. And then I took that yarn and finished knitting the tube for this sock. And then once I was done that, um, I just went back and did the cuff in this cream color. And then this one, I also started just on waist yarn because I was knitting the cuff up on this one. I wanted the two cast offs to be the same. Mm -hmm. So I, I just cast it on with waist yarn and then I was able to do both cuffs up so that they would both finish the same. I really like how the cuffs turn it on this one. You can really see the Yeah, pattern. yeah. So this is the, um, just a twisted rib not really twisted, it's not twisted. This is a mock cable, okay? So a mock cable is done without using a cable needle and you just go into the front of the second stitch and then knit the first stitch and then slip it off the needle so you don't have to use a cable needle, but it shows up really nice in the solid color yarn. Yeah. Okay, so because it's the same on this one, but you don't, you can't see it nearly as well when you use a variegated yarn to do it. So this pattern basically is a combination of, well, I put in the mock cable um, basically, it's Susan B. Anderson's Smooth Operator, and you can see the heel in this one I did with just the, the decrease that just gives you one line down the heel. So the heel is kind of a combination. I use Curvy Werbies. Um, she's got a tutorial on YouTube that shows you how to do the afterthought heel where you actually cut the yarn. I know, which is oh, that's good too, yeah. <laughs> So then I, I usually knit a few rows before I go into the decreasing just to give enough heel depth. So, mm -hmm. and... That's it for us. FOs. That's all of our FOs. So we just put Miss Zoe down for a nap. Um, we just came back from some brunch, a little bit of intermission, yep. uh, but we're going to go on to our whips now. Okay. So um, my first whip is, okay, this is in my bag that was from Dawn of the Codependent Knitters. Mm -hmm. And this, her company or her bags are called um, The Knits Best Thing. So I've got socks in here, but I actually could put something larger in here if I, I wanted say, to. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this sock is for dad, my oh, husband. I like that colorway. So he picked the pattern that he wanted himself, and he picked the yarn. Okay, so this pattern is called chain mail. Kind of show you there if you can see it in the, in the sock. So it's kind of wrapped around a lot of stitches. Anyway, the pattern is in this book, Personal Footprints by Kat Bordy. Um, the chain mail pattern, we'll put a picture up on, on screen of the pattern. Anyway, the sock is originally knit in a sport weight yarn. Um, sport weight yarn's kind of heavy, so I didn't really want to do it in sport weight. I wanted to do it in sock yarn. So I had to adjust the pattern a little bit. Um, the sock also has the different toe and the different heel, and I didn't want that either, so I had to adjust it for uh, top down. The pattern was also toe up, but I wanted to do it top down. Um, so what I did was I just figured out the stitches and the tension that I would need to do it in the different yarn. So I'm going to put in an afterthought heel when I'm done. So when I do my afterthought heel, I actually put a couple of lifelines in between where I want to cut the yarn to put in the heel. I, and I have done it where I've kind of just put the needle in after across the row, but if you put that in 
while the stitches are on the needle, then you know it's exact where it's supposed to be. So when I go back with this, I'll just pick those stitches back up onto my needle and then I'll like hold it apart and then cut in the middle. <laughs> I told Jonathan she's going to so cut scary, her, yeah. her hair too. But anyways, I found that works really well. It's, um, again, I said before in the other socks, the pattern is, uh, it's on YouTube. Do you remember who I said it was? <laughs> okay, anyways, I, I, it's, it's Susan B. Anderson does an afterthought heel, but there's a video on YouTube, Kirby Werby, that's what it is, yeah. and it shows you exactly how to do the cutting. So it's a combination of both that I use. Um, the yarn that I'm using is Ancient Arts, okay, it is a Canadian yarn, and it is a, a fingering weight. The composition of the yarn is 49% wool, 34% mohair, 11% nylon, 4% acrylic, and 2% silk. And it, it feels really nice. Like, and you can see kind of it's got a like, little bit of a halo in it. Yeah. Yep. So that would be from the mohair. But the mohair and the silk are supposed to be really strong. So I think that's, that's it'll um, be a nice wearing sock. Yeah. So I'm going to just kind of stick it on this one sock blocker. If you just kind of hold it that way. Just the end of it. I can't put it all on because I don't have the heel in yet. But if I put it on like this and hold it up, you should be able to see the pattern a little yeah. bit better. Okay, so I'll hold it up to... Yep. So you can see the pattern a little bit better there. So this top part of the sock, you actually have more stitches than when you get down to here, just because of the, the pattern, so that you've got the right width around. Yep. Okay. And these sock blockers, do you want to talk about those? Uh, sure. These, actually, my father has made some sock blockers for my mom. Um, in multiple different sizes. So this is the biggest size, right? And this is the, the baby size. Teeny tiny size. A couple of years from size. now. Yeah. Infant size and what? The small feet, because I mean yeah. minor. I mean minor probably. And those, are, those, aren't, those aren't even all of them, but he's yeah. made them for different sizes. And he's also, for some of the pairs that we have, he's put, um, like in the top, he's put a hanger up here so that we can put our socks on after they're out of the wash. And put them on there to dry, so mm -hmm. they just hang up down in the basement on the blocker. Yeah, I mean that's so, pretty, pretty handy. Pretty handy with stuff. Um, you can even see like in the background here, this wine rack. My dad actually made it from some pallets, right? Uh -huh. Pallet board. So, yeah. yeah, he's he's pretty good with yeah. the tools. And I'll say up here we also have our <laughs> uh, <laughs> our our FOs. <laughs> yeah, we finished those ones. Uh, our one whip and just one acquisition. We're kind of sad on our acquisitions right now. Yeah, well, in this house, but we'll have to work on that. Yeah, we'll work on that. <laughs> okay. So um, I do you want to show yours? Yeah. Okay. I only have well, I guess I have like one and kind of one uh, whip. Um, this I am actually doing the super simple diamond dishcloth by Louise Patterson. Yeah. Um, Louise Patterson is one of the fiber friends. Um, you haven't met her yet, but when we go to um, Knit Stitch in London sometime, when we go for a knit night, you'll meet yeah. Louise. And um, then Louise is putting together a series of patterns that kind of graduate you through um, different techniques. Yeah, because I mean, I'm, I'm still a beginner, so I'm learning. So this is the first project I've done with uh, adding increases. increases. Yeah. yeah, everything has been pretty much straightforward knitting and purling so yeah. far. So, I mean, <laughs> uh, mom tried to teach me this. Uh, I just cast on this last night and <laughs> I'm had a little bit of a hard time teaching me. I think I was a little bit frustrated and exhausted from having a four and a half month old. Um, but then once I got the hang of it, I was like, oh, of course, like yeah. this is pretty easy. It's just, uh, yeah, I mean, your tension looks really good. Your increases look really good. Yeah, no, I like the, the feel of it. I like the, the cotton. Um, this is actually Estelle Yarns Suds Crafting Cotton um in the colorway 54004 so it's like a kind of a gray splash yeah, sort of right up my alley yeah of course yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah that's and the, the needles are the they are it's cast on a 3.75 yeah again she's i well and which it makes it sometimes a little bit harder because your stitches are yeah and i was gonna say thicker. i think maybe that was what a little bit of the, At the beginning learning yeah. was the, it was a little bit harder just because i'm not used to knitting so yeah so tight but, but it makes a nice smaller. like it's nice when the dishcloth is nice and the cotton really yeah tight like that it makes a nicer dishcloth so, so yeah i'm actually like looking forward to maybe doing some more of these yeah the last, future, last night when you first started you were never doing yeah i was never doing more than one <laughs> but actually it's kind of nice because after you get that first stitch at it it's just it's just straight yeah. in so and if you if you do like like quite a few of those and kind of have them set away they make a nice a nice gift if you're going to like um someone's house or yeah, like a lot of people gift. use them as washcloths too not just as dishcloths yeah so it'd be nice, nice with like a bar of homemade soap or something yeah. as a nice gift so yeah 
So okay, okay, so my, we'll move on to my next whip. whip. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this one, this whip is in my Jetsons bag, mm-hmm. and this is a large tote. Um, it's got um, the filling in it, so it's nice and soft and squishy. And this is by Carolyn of Evertotes. Okay, and Carolyn's also one of the fiber friends, and okay. this bag's amazing. It's got like a nice pocket on the outside that I can put a lot of stuff in, or mm-hmm. although sometimes I forget it's there. <laughs> And then on the inside, there's lots of room to put lots of things in it. I use this bag. I can, you know, throw my iPad in it, a sweater, whatever I'm working on. Yep. It all fits in here. So this is... It's got a cute little zipper pull, too. Yes, it does. A little sheet. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to show that. Yeah. Right <laughs> it's got a little sheet that you can actually take off the zipper and use as a progress keeper. Yeah. So, so this is my Zweig by Caitlin Hunter. Okay, and I believe in the last podcast, that's that's the back say, there. It's really coming along. Yeah, okay. but in the last podcast, I just, I think I was about to hear on the yoke. Um, so, yeah, I've got the body done now. I'm just waiting to do the sleeves. Now, I, when I did this, and I was here, I think, was I here when I ripped it out? Yes. I had done probably like six inches from the underarm. And it had the pattern, the little pattern in it. And I kind of did the pattern the reverse way. And it looked okay. I didn't mind it. But then because this yarn is, well, it's tonal, but there's like some light pieces in it. So sometimes in one of the little patterns, when you saw one of the light pieces, that's all you saw. And you couldn't really tell what the pattern yeah. was. So I thought, I, I don't, I'm not happy with it. So <laughs> I don't know what was going on with both of us this week. We were I know, knitting I know. in the reverse. Huh? I, I messed up my socks with I know. the number of stitches. <laughs> and had to do another one there. Anyway. So I ripped it back here. I just basically ripped it off the needles. I didn't I didn't even think about maybe I should put a needle in first. I just ripped it off the needles. But then I took like a, a couple of size smaller needles and it was relatively easy to get all the stitches back on. Mm-hmm. So then I re-knit down and I like it. I think I like it a, a lot better without the, the pattern in it because there's enough busyness up here okay. for me that I just thought it's, you know, the yarn's nice. I don't need more yeah. going on in it. Yeah. So, And this is knit in Hedgehog Fiber Skinny Singles. The green is called ferrum, and the cream part up at the top with the little flex in it is mm-hmm. called pine. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, hopefully, I'll maybe yeah, next that time, finished I think by next time. Yeah. So anyway, and that that's the again you've seen a lot of me on Instagram, and people are doing them all in different colors. But mm-hmm. that's a week by Caitlin Hunter. Yep. Um, and so I think pretty much I only have that one dishcloth now. Although I'm looking to cast on two things relatively soon because. As much as I was a monogamous knitter before, I've gotten too much yarn now right now that I want to cast on, so I know that's not going to stay the case. So uh, last podcast, we talked about uh, this from Zen Yarn, yarn Guardians. Yep. Um, it's a it's oak. It's a one-of-a-kind yes, one of color, kind. Um, but this is what I've decided that I'm going to do my first pair of socks with. And so pretty. it is. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to do a vanilla pair of socks. Uh, Mom's gonna help me with the pattern, so there's no. You just yeah, that we're just gonna. That I think we're just gonna do a two through. by two rib, and then like, we're actually gonna do an afterthought heel though. So we're gonna do the 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 cutting it just all the way so down. Long. Yeah, it's not that bad, but we'll, <laughs> we'll get you to put the lifelines in, and that way you'll learn how to put lifelines in too. Yeah. And then when you pick it up, it's a little bit easier. To and I did decide that I'm going to do two circular needles, so we'll see how that goes. Yep. Um, and what are these again? These are the those are two point five. And they're 16 inch. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. hopefully these will go okay. We'll see. Yeah, they should, they should, they should work. <laughs> but I'm excited to, to cast this on. Yeah. So. We got it rolled, right? Yes. It makes a pretty cake. It does make a pretty <laughs> cake. So I figured, you know, with a four and a half month old, like, that's a whip. If you've yeah, got kind of. Rolled. Not really. But so, <laughs> I just counted it as that. <laughs> so, okay. And I have one more work in progress. And this is just in a, in a bag that I got at Winners. Mm-hmm. I just, I think it's a makeup bag or something, but I kind of liked it and I like the little pom-poms at the end. So. Yeah. Okay, so this is, this pattern is called Air and it is by Amy Miller. And the pattern in this is basically all in the back of the sweater. So the back of the sweater is all, I think I have it backwards there. The back of the sweater, to hold that up by itself, is all um, a lace design. And then when you get to kind of up to the yoke, it's just got um, kind of a dividing line across. And then the rest of the sweater basically is all stocking stitch. Mm-hmm. So there's the, see a, a close up of the pattern. We'll put a picture of the pattern yeah. in here so you can see what the pattern actually looks like. It's really pretty. It, it is pretty. And it's nice and light like that yarn is. I'll show you the yarn in a minute, it's but the good. yarn feels really nice. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I've got, I find sometimes if you've got a yarn like this and it's skinny stitches, um, it's nice to have one of these little needle cozies to stick your needles in. So that way when you've got it in you the bag, you can pull it out, you're not pulling yeah. the stitches yeah. off the off the needle. So this was one that I actually got at a knitting retreat that I went to um, with Shall We Knit. That's a knitting store in Kitchener Waterloo. Mm -hmm. And these are actually made by Zigzag Stitches. So she's got, she's on Instagram, she's got really nice bags and lots of other things. Okay, and the yarn for that, put this bag up here. Okay, so this is Holst Garn. Okay, and it's by well, it's from a, um, a company over in Europe, Germany, I think. I'm pretty sure it's Germany. Anyway, this is, is Coast. So that's the, it's Holstgarn as a company and then Coast is kind of like the, the make of the yarn. Mm -hmm. And it is a cotton and lamb's wool blend. So it's 55% lamb's wool and 45% cotton. And it's a fingering, but it's a light fingering. But the yardage in this is amazing. Like there's 350 meters in that 50 gram ball. Mm -hmm. So doing that sweater is probably only going to take me like three, three and a half balls yeah, of that's it. Not bad so yeah, it's really good. And it comes in an amazing array of colors. I really like that color. This color is called cocoa, but to me it doesn't it's look no, like brown It's more like anything. a it's mauvey, like grayish like a, color. Yeah, like a pinky mauvey gray. Yeah. Kind of, yeah, it's, it's a really pretty color. I really like it. So basically I'm kind of down to almost the bottom of that. And then I've got to put the sleeves in, but this is one that has to get sewn together. And I don't, <laughs> that's not my favorite part of making sweaters and sewing things together, but but I'll do it. So, <laughs> so I think that's... Is that it for our whips? I think so. Okay. Do you have any more whips? I don't. Yeah. So I guess on to acquisitions. Yeah. Um, okay, so for my first acquisition, so my only acquisitions <laughs> around... Oh, no, no, you have that one too. What other one? For the cowl. Oh, right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to look at that one, so I'm not sure. Well, you can look at it. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, we went on a celebratory uh, road trip because yeah, it's a 20 minute road trip. Well, yeah, <laughs> a very short road trip um, because we brought Zoe with us right. um, to a yarn shop in St. Thomas. Um, it was mom's last day of work yesterday. yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, yeah, we went to go bike. <laughs> yeah, so we we are. To, yeah, so I've been there quite. You've been there. We've been, I've been there, there before. before. It's yeah. um, Little Red Mitten, and it's in St. Thomas, and they have, they have a really, a good, really selection. good selection of yarn. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I ended up picking some skeins up of the Cascades 220 Heathers, um, and this is in the colorway Silver Gray. That's pretty. Um, and I decided that I'm going to change my, well, I changed my mind about what sweater I'm going to do with the, the foxglove color that I bought in the Echo in the, Plus. In the Echo Plus. Yeah. And I'm going to use this one to do the mail-in sweater by Isabel yes. Creamer instead. And then I'm going to use the Eco Plus to do the, uh, what was it called? Baldrick. Baldrick, Baldrick. yeah. And another pattern by... That's another pattern by Isabel Creamer. Yeah. We both um, really there's, like yeah, there's a lot of patterns by, that I want to yeah. knit of hers, so... Yeah, we'll see. But uh, yeah, I think that this. So one it's will an, be... it's it's um 100 wool. Right? Yeah, it's, it's 100 percent Peruvian, Peruvian wool, wool again. And yep. And like I've I've intro. actually knit a couple of sweaters in that, and I really like it. It wears well, and it it washes nice. Nicely. And, yeah. So I think you'll like it. And it's in gray. And so, it's gray. You know, yeah, I, I, they gray. had a, a well, really wide. Pink. That's true. They had a really wide selection of colors there. Yes. So it was hard time deciding because there was actually a like a tealy color. But I just stuck in my yeah, gray. Just think about it. When you do, if you do your, well, I mean, I have lots of colored sweaters, but if you do kind of neutral colored sweaters, then basically you can do like little cowls or, or something and like or bandana things that has color. a little pop of color to put yeah. on with them. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, that's, that's very my nice. Okay. Um, this is my first acquisition. This is Blue Moon Fiber Arts and it's their Targi Worsted. Um, so it's 100% wool, but it's a targy wool, so it's not a super wash wool. So if you feel it, it's a little bit rustic, but not really. Not, it feels yeah. soft. Yeah. Uh, this color is called Ursula. It is like all kind of teal and green, and it's got a little bit of kind of like a mustardy yellow going through it. But it's it's almost like more tonal, really, because it's not yeah. really it's not yeah it's not really variegated. Mm -hmm. Well, it's variegated, but it's more because it's tonal. I think it'll look more just kind of uniform when I knit it. Um, and I've got two skeins of this, and this is 200 and oh, 240 grams, so it's mm -hmm. like a fair size hank, yep. right? And it's got 616 yards or 563 meters. So this yarn, my husband bought me for our 36th anniversary. So 
but I'm making something for me with it, not for him. <laughs> so have you decided what you're going to make? I don't, with I'm it not yet? sure. I I've had different ideas, but I'm I'm just not sure yet. I'll let you know when I decide. Okay. Um, and he got this yarn in Sarnia at Feather Your Nest. Feather Your Nest has an amazing selection of, of Blue Loon Fiber Arts. They've got a whole wall of hedgehog fibers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they have really nice yeah. yarns in we there. We need to go there. I yes, haven't, I haven't been there. Yeah, you were. Not lately. Not lately, yeah. but you were there. <laughs> so. Okay, do you have any more acquisitions? Uh, I have one more that you bought for me. <laughs> so an acquisition. And I, I totally forgot about this, but I, uh, again, more Cascades yarn. Yeah, you can see still, that I'm really on for brand rigging for cascade yarn but that's okay yeah, uh, it's 100 percent wool and it's yeah, nice and i this think one, that one's actually all pocket too isn't yeah it? um what i have to know <laughs> undo it undo it so this is the i didn't say this is the cascade yarns uh eco duo it does feel really nice <laughs> so um with this i'm gonna make the bandana cowl which do you remember who i can't remember we'll, we'll put it down below or probably on screen right now um, but this is 70% uh, undyed baby alpaca and 30% merino wool. Yeah, it's nice. So, and it's kind of marled, right? Like it's yeah. kind of like the way the the way the yarn is. It's it's you can see like there's there's some strands where you can see the like the gray and the cream are kind of marled, and then yep. other strands where it's just the cream. So yeah, I think it's going to knit up really pretty. So it's very nice. Yeah, I think. It look nice. Yeah, with and you've got you've got a black coat, don't you? Yes. Oh, you've got a burgundy coat too. That yeah, they would look both would look nice. I so never do that. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't even seen this yet. No, I haven't. I was gonna say <laughs> this is uh, my friend Dawn from Codependent Knitters. She went on a trip with her husband to Las Vegas, and she actually put it in order for Lolo did it. And so, you know, she asked like her friends if they want to bring something back. And so, of course, I'm on the website right away looking like, what do we mm -hmm. want from Lolo? So, this first stain. Okay, I'm showing it up Oh, here. it's for St. Patrick's yeah, Day. It's, it, this is called Hippo for St. Patty's 2018. So, it's... Oh, man, you should have been knitting this already. I know, I should have, but I didn't have to work. <laughs> I didn't have time. So, anyways, this one is her everyday sock. So, her everyday sock is... Let me see here. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Oh, right there it says, oh, no. It's fingering. 75, oh. 7525? Yeah. Okay, so it's 7525. I guess we should open it up yes. and look at the color. <laughs> okay. I like that it's got like a gray. Yeah, it's, the base is gray. Like, well, all of her, she does like hippo for a whole bunch of holidays. And like all the base is gray. gray. But like, it's just got really nice colors in there. Like there's the green and the, the straw and like that one's almost like an emerald. And there's some spots that look like it's kind of teal. So yeah, so I think that's gonna knit up. I think that's gonna knit up nice. But you're right, I should have been should have been doing that my... already. Yeah. But anyway, so that's that was okay. the first one. Yep. So let's see if I can wind it back the way. No, not bad. I need to get better on that. Not great, <laughs> but okay, and the second one is called Pretty Little Zombies. Okay, I think she's had this colorway around for a while, and this is on her sparkle sock. Okay. So it does have a little bit of stellina yeah. in it. Um, so this one is, again, you're better at finding that than me. You have better eyes. You have younger eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, it's 70, uh, 75% merino wool, 20% nylon, 5% stilina. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's, uh, like a 75, 20 and 5% stilina and it's a silver stilina that's in this. Um, and again, we'll just open it up and so it's. Got like it's got like the hot pink in it. It's got kind of the neon green. It's got kind of a mustardy. It's got some kind of like black speckles. Yep. I don't know. I just thought it was really pretty, and it would make nice socks. And you could put, pick yeah. out any of those colors, like to pop to in, in the heel and the toe yep. of a different color. Okay, and then the last one is this one is her plush sock. So this is seventy-five percent. Superwash Merino, 15% nylon and 10% tensile. And tensile a lot of times is kind of like bamboo. Yeah, it's so soft, it gives right? Yeah, and it yeah. gives it more strength, I think. Yeah. So this color is called Blue Suede Shoes. Okay, and this originally I had I had bought because um, 
dad picked out a color and on he thought this was more more like blue. navyish yeah. than it was and so when i got it it's almost he's like, like a, a it's like a purplish tinge. pinkish yeah. tint so he he that's when he decided that he'd have the ancient arts in the blue mm -hmm. spruce colorway so i did that for him instead so i mean i really like this so i'm glad that i'm gonna certainly do something with it whether it be socks or a scarf or something i'm not yeah. sure yet and it feels really nice it is really so nice. and then in our packages she also sent along this Oh, that's really cute. Yeah, this Lolo Lolo did it. Got the little hippo on it for the tape, measure. the tape measure. And then some of these little markers. These are the light bulb markers. Okay. So these are actually really nice to put on for, like, even if you're marking stitches. Because they're so light, like, it's there's no weight to them at all. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so they don't pull your, they don't pull your project down, or, down or your yarn down or anything. Yeah. So they're really nice. Okay. And my... Last acquisition that I actually had before last time, but I forgot to bring it to show it, is my chai goo needle set. I know in the last podcast I was talking about how much I like knitting on chai goo needles. Yep. So I decided to get <laughs> the set. Okay, so there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's <laughs> 13. There's 13. There's 13? one missing. That's what I was I'm say, using one of them. There, I'm yeah. using one of them right now. I'm using my 3.75s. And then different cords. And the thing with these is you, there's different cables that you use depending on what size of needle you're using. So the smaller sizes, okay. you use, use the, the it's got a smaller connector like yep. on the join. And then the bigger sizes have like a bigger connector on the join. And these are all the red lace cables. And I love them. I love the way they've got memory, but they're not, they don't kink. And they, yeah, 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 yeah. Really like them. So yeah, so that was my little treat for working. So those are all your acquisitions? <laughs> what about the road trip that we took? I, got, I might have gotten some, but I'll show those next time. Okay. <laughs> um, so now I think we're going to take talk about the make-along that yeah. we want to do, yeah. right? So for our first make-along, and that this goes back to our intro where we all had that the different hats, hats on. Mm -hmm. And so we thought for the first make-along, a hat would be a good thing to, to yeah, because it's it doesn't take a whole lot of yarn. You know, they're relatively quick to knit. Um, you can do them in whatever whatever size or weight yarn that you want. Mm -hmm. You can knit it. You can crochet it. You can do an adult size. You can do a baby, a baby size. size. Like mm -hmm. we just want to get everybody, you know, like into our first one. And um, so I'm going to put up a thread on Ravelry for doing your hat. So basically, it starts today, which is St. Patrick's Day, March yep. the 17th, and it's going to go till the end of April. Yeah. And then at the end of April, we'll do a random number generator and pick out someone to win a prize. Yeah. So I don't know what the prize is going to be yet, but we'll let you we'll know on the something. next podcast. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll find something. We know that hats are kind of, I know we're going into spring, but we live in Canada. Yeah. It's so, cold. Yeah, There's still snow outside You on the could ground. still have a hat on today. It was, that's even true. though it's nice and sunny, it's yeah. still pretty cool out yeah. there. So. so yeah. And if you don't, if it's not something you're going to wear right away, like a hat makes a nice gift. So you could put it away for a present for, yeah. for someone later sure. or put it away for just next winter. Yep. Okay. So everybody would love you to get involved and just... You know, knit your hats, put them in there. You can knit as many as you want. And mm -hmm. Every hat goes in there for a, a finished object. Yeah. Um, so now we've talked about our knits. Mm -hmm. We're going to move on to a new segment, our, our pieces. Yeah. Right? Okay. So for my first piece, um, I've been doing some baking. Um, for Valentine's Day. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, my husband got me this Lodge cast iron Dutch oven um, in the Caribbean blue color. And it's a six quart casserole dish um, and I found a really good recipe on Pinterest which I know sometimes Pinterest recipes can be a hit or miss but this one's definitely um, a hit. Yeah, it's, delicious. Uh, it's for just a, a crusty loaf of bread and it's only four ingredients. Um, we're gonna put up some pictures here of just like a couple of, of uh, the but process. We already ate the bread. Yeah the, there's no more <laughs> bread left. Um, probably I'll make some more. Tonight. Well, I'm not here. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> we'll make some more when you come back okay. next week. It was so good. It's so good. Um, I, the recipe is actually from uh, JoeCooks.com, so I'll link that down below too. But yeah, it's been it's been really easy. Really I mean, it, it's a really easy recipe. Yeah, it just takes time. You know, there's, it's no kneading. Right. Uh, just I mean, like I said, like four, you just mix it in the same bowl that you're gonna that mix you're gonna it let in, it rise in, and then you yep. just let it sit overnight. Uh, yeah, let it sit. 14 to 16 hours. Okay. That's where I guess the main chunk of time. Yeah, but it's because you're, you're not, not doing, doing anything. anything. That's right. And I mean, I'm I'm a turning leave. I'm at home, so right. it's easy for me right. to just pop. And it then in you just ready. Just put pop the here. dough in here. Uh, cook it for half an hour with the lid on. 15 minutes on 450 the whole time with the lid off, and then yeah. And it's, it's so done. good. I mean, the first night when you have it, like 
just fresh. It's great, and then it tastes Toast. amazing. Toasted. Amazing. Really yeah. Good toasted. So yeah, so. that's my that's my first piece, and I'm, I'm I found a recipe for raisin bread. Oh, that sounds so good. that might be the next the next one. Okay, so for my piece this week, yep. um, probably it's probably about a year ago now. I started weaving. Um, I went and took a class at Little Red Mitten, just a basic class, and then I decided I really liked it, and I was going to buy a loom. So I got a 32 inch rigid heddle loom, and I've been weaving different things on it. So what I'm going to show you now is some tea towels that I make. Mm -hmm. So I've got two different patterns here that I did. So this one here is um, a log cabin and it's 100% cotton and you just you weave three of them actually at the same time and then you mm -hmm. cut them apart and you sew in the hems but it, it they make amazing tea towels the cotton is like they do they're awesome they're, mama's gifted them to a couple of people and now they're in high demand <laughs> and they they like you throw them in the washer and the dryer like there's no real no they wear real, really like, nicely. special care to yeah. them and yeah they wear really nicely and they're i don't know really nice weight and so the pattern is just like you can do all sorts of things with two colors or three colors on a rigid head of loom. So it's just the way you kind of arrange your warp and the way you put through the mm -hmm. the weft threads when you're doing it. Because I could make that, you know, I could have this bigger in here. I could have them the same size. So I just like playing with it and seeing mm -hmm. what, what designs I can come up with. And then this one here is one that I did. And this is actually... Um, Cotton, so it's a combination of cotton and linen, mm -hmm. and linen's really nice for tea towels too. So this is this one's got three colors in it, and it's just sort of a like a country Christmas plaid design. Um, so it's got the like the burgundy red and the olivey green, and then the like tanny color. cream color. Yeah, and this one, the cotton linen ones are really nice too. Like if you feel that, it's like yeah, see, it feels a little bit different, but they wear really Some nicely too, nice. and they they dry the dishes nice and. The cotton linen is a little bit more expensive that, than the plain cotton, but not a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it makes, I don't know, a nice gift. And a nice gift would be to have like maybe a set of tea towels and a couple of like dishcloths Dish together. Stuff, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the reason I decided to get a rigid heddle loom is I'd seen one when we were on vacation in Nova Scotia and they actually had tea towels set up on it. And the girl convinced me that, oh yeah, if you get a rigid heddle loom, like you'll be able to go through your knitting stash really fast and you'll use all your yarn up. Yeah, right. That it just means your knitting that stash is now work. your knitting and that, your... That's right. Now I have two stashes. Yeah. I have a knitting stash <laughs> and a weaving stash. So it's actually taken up more room, but yeah. I really like it. And I have well, I have woven things like shawls and scarves and things yeah. with yeah. wool. And it does, it does make really nice like scarves and they, they're really drapey and mm -hmm. pretty. So... So yeah, so it just means I need more room to keep yarn. Yeah. <laughs> so. so I think that's it for this episode, right? Um, but we just wanted to say thanks to everybody who watched our first episode. Um, for those who, who subscribed and left comments, um, it means so much to us yeah. because, I mean, we just put out our first one thinking this was something fun to do. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just been great, the feedback that we've been getting. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got so, lots of comments about how to knit your socks. Yeah, on lots of co so comments nice. on Ravelry. That's been awesome. So, yeah, we just wanted to say thanks for everybody. Um, and you wanted to shout out just a couple yeah, there's there's um, in like right? several different podcasters that have given us a shout out either on their podcast or like through Instagram. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to thank um, Lisa and Dawn, codependent knitters, mm -hmm. and I'd like to thank Louise and Carolyn and Adrian, the fiber friends, mm -hmm. and I'd also like to thank. The podcast Mama in the Mans. Um, that was a new podcast that I just started watching, and she's mm -hmm. really nice to watch. And then I'd also like to thank um, Crafty Mama, and that's Dawn. She's in Hamilton. Um, she gave us a really nice shout out on her podcast. Um, and if there's anybody that I've forgotten, you know, like I'm, I'm very happy that uh, yeah. you know people give yeah. shout outs to each other. And yeah, it seems so. to enjoy what we enjoy doing. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. It's nice. That, it's nice to know that other people enjoy knitting and crafting as much as we do. Because yeah. back when you were little, I mean, I, I had some friends that did knitting and things, but it wasn't to this extent. And I mean, I think that dad thought it was crazy with the amount of yarn that, <laughs> that I had and kept in the house. And now he even sees that more people even have more yarn than I do. So, so that's always a good thing. So thanks again for knitting and we hope to be back soon. Yep. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.